Okay, so uh, good morning, and let us start the lesson. So, uh, because you remembered, uh, Morton wanted to do an exam, so we didn't uh, find time to solve the next problem. So, the 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 topic for this question is what I told you before in the previous session. So let us refresh our memories, and then immediately go to the next lesson. So here we have. Uh, the equation you see it's of the degree four has a pure imaginary root and then this is a little bit a strange way of giving you information you know usually uh, a root of the equation is given to you directly but what we know about this polynomial is that this polynomial has a pure imaginary root which root is that we don't know and then we want to solve this equation. As you see, it's a level three problem in that math 5000 book, volume four. Okay, do you have any idea how to solve the problem? Yes? Yeah, since uh, it's, uh, it has a pure imaginary root, the root has the form of A times R. Yes? So. <coughs> yes? Yes, so that is very good. If you remember, if, you go, if I go to the previous lesson, so do you remember I talked to you about the theorem here? If P of Z is a, a polynomial with real coefficients, if the complex number Z node is a root, this polynomial, uh, the, the, uh, this polynomial has another root immediately, and that is Z node conjugate. Okay, so that is a, the main theorem that if you remember, we talked about and we actually proved it in general. Okay, so here, uh, if I ask you, how can I use this theorem here? First of all, I want you to understand something. If, so what uh, Carl said is actually uh, correct. So if Z is a pure imaginary number, it is of this type. Yes? Now, if I ask you, what is Z bar? What is Z bar in this case? It is minus AI. Yes? But what is minus AI is nothing except minus Z itself. So it means that if I have a pure imaginary complex number, we immediately realize the conjugate is equal to the negative of the number. Yes? And according to the theorem that we had before, because Z is a root... Z bar, which is minus Z, is also a root. Yes? Is that understandable? So let us write it like this. So if I want to answer this question, I would say that let Z node be the pure imaginary number that is the root of this equation. Yes? Since uh, the coefficients of this polynomial are all real, we know by the previous theorem, we know that Z0 bar is also a root. Okay? But since Z0 is a pure imaginary, Z0 bar is equal to minus Z0. Is that understandable? Everything? So it means that when you tell me that this equation has a pure imaginary root, I immediately realize the negative of that number is also a root. Yes? So how can I use these two pieces of information? The problem is that still I don't know that number. In the previous type of problems, I gave you, for example, I tell you that Check two is the, is the solution, you can find the other solutions. But here, you don't know exactly that's true. So how can I use that? 
So let us do, I don't know, what, where, you, where do you want to start? So I would say that Z node is a root. What, it, what I can conclude from here? I can conclude it satisfies the equation, yes? So it means that Z node to power 4 plus 6 Z node to power 3 plus 13 Z node to power 2 plus 18 Z node plus 30 is equal to 0. I myself realize that minus Z node is a root as well, yes? So what can I conclude? It means that when I replace Z with minus Z node, that the same is true. It should be true. So it becomes minus Z node to power 4 plus 6 minus Z node to power 3 plus 13 minus Z node to power 2 plus 18 minus Z node plus 30 is equal to 0. Agree with me? Is that understandable? Okay, and then what we do, I can simplify it a little bit. Minus z node to power 4, it doesn't, it's exactly equal to z node itself to power 4. But the next one is minus z node to power 3. The next one is again positive. Yes, because the, the power is even. The next one is negative. And of course, the next one is 30 equals to 0. So this is actually, I would say, it's not clear. This is, this is not a standard. I really like the problem. It's not a standard at all, but you need to understand what to do. So these are the things we can understand. But now how can I use this fact? Do you see any way to use this fact somehow? Yes? Those two should be equal. Uh, no. Why they should be equal? Yeah, so y what you are saying is more or less correct. Why they should be equal? Yes, you are right. Now I understand. They are both equal to zero. That was not my impression, but you're also correct. Yes, because both of them are equal to zero, so they are the same. I was thinking, uh, I was thinking in a different way. I wanted to add these two equations, but you are right. Because these are a particular, this is a particular number, and that's also a particular number. Both of them are equal to zero, so they have to be equal. So let us follow yours. Uh, uh, so here, what I conclude, so let me call this one number one, and let me call this one number two. So comparing number one and number two, as you said, I conclude that z zero to the four plus six z to the zero to the three. Let me just write it quickly without reading it. Okay. Okay. Then what happens? It's clear. At least some part of it is clear. Yes. I can eliminate these two from both sides, yes. 30 is eliminated from both sides. What else? This one and that one, yes. And then what I can do, I don't know exactly what to do, but we move everything to the left. This one and this one becomes 12. Uh, so 12, Z node to the power of 3. And then what is, what is the other one is plus... 36 z node agree yes. and then yeah please double check my calculations is is there something else no. yeah so have i missed something no i think everything is right do you agree yes and then what i can do for example it's equal to zero what i can do i can factor a 12 z node out yes and then what i get i get z node squared plus 3. Do you agree with me? Equals to 0. Then you see we were able to solve the problem. Because, can I use the zero product rule? Yes, because zero product rule was an uh, arithmetic rule when I was talking about uh, real numbers and I told you that I want to keep all the rules the same, yes? So it means that I can use the uh, zero product rule. So this gives me two possibilities. Either this root is 0 or z is zero squared is negative three yes okay but is can z node be equal to three actually let me open up a space a little bit okay so i can do it later so do you think that z node equals to zero is acceptable yeah because it is if it doesn't it doesn't fit to the equation yes if i go back is zero a root for this equation Apparently and clearly no, because if I put zero here, it be this vanishes, 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 then it becomes 30 equal to zero, which is nonsense, yes? So it means that uh, this 
is not acceptable here so the only possibility that i have is this one so the z node to the two should be minus three okay so uh, let me make a little bit of space here yeah i don't need that much space for that exercise okay so i would say that this does not satisfy and the reason that you get something extra is because something is not reversible so you might say that i am doing everything correctly what i why i am getting a false root the reason is that i am at, i am assuming that there is a number z node which satisfies this equation then it gives rise me it, it gives rise to two equations one equation equation number one and the other equation equation number two and i when i simplify it i get it this i get this one but of course if i give you just this one it is not possible to draw this conclusion you cannot draw this you cannot say that one is true and two is true we don't know Yes, if one is true and two is true, we can conclude that this one is true. But if this one is true, there is no guarantee that both number one and two are true. So this is the reason that you get the false root, because they are not equivalent. Is that understandable? Because I want you to understand, because everything we are doing is reasonably correct, so why we are getting something extra? Yes, this is important to understand. The reason is that some part, these two are not completely equivalent. From 1 and from 2, I can conclude this. But from this, I cannot conclude that 1 and 2 happen simultaneously. I don't know. So this is the part that this is not reversible. This is why when you get something, you have to check it. Might be even this is not working as well. So we need to make sure that this is also true. Yes. But is this one true or not? So let us double check. If I put minus 3 here, it becomes 9. What can I write for 6z3? So it becomes 6z node to the power of 2, z node, yes. But z node to power 2 is minus 3, so it becomes minus 18 z node. And the next one is 13 z node, which becomes minus 39. And the next one is positive 18 z node. And the next one is 30, yes. So I have to double check if this is also a false root or not. But it is not, you see, because this one and that one are gone. And minus 39 plus 9 is minus 30 plus 30 is 0. So what we get, this one was a false one, but this one is a real one. Is that understandable? Okay, so the number that we are looking for is this number. So what is Z0? Can you tell me what is Z0 then? Therefore, what is Z0? Yeah, plus or minus square root of 3i. And both of them are actually... Uh, pure imaginary number so this is my z node okay and now how can i solve the problem because the question is asking you find all the roots solve the equation means find all the roots so how should i solve that yes Yeah, that is if you remember this doesn't work because if i just divide by one of them the the quotient becomes a third degree polynomial then i will be in trouble but let us use both of them yes so you are right i have two roots so one of them is z plus 3i so it means my polynomial is divisible by z node minus square root of 3i it's also divisible by z node plus square root of 3i yes because of what we learned in the previous lesson, it implies that P0, sorry, let me write it. The, the polynomial is divisible by the product, yes? By the product. But can you do the product in your head? What's the product of these two in your head? It is z node squared and then uh, sorry why, why should i write uh, i i should write z not z node here yeah that's my mistake so z z 
minus this number and z plus this number. So it is divisible by z squared plus 3. Do you agree with me? Yes, that's the product. So it means that now I go and divide this polynomial by z squared plus 3. Yeah. So, yes, I have to suffer a lot. <laughs> I have been stupid, yes. Yeah. So let us do the, the, this the, uh, division, long division method. So z to the 4 plus 6z to the 3 plus 13z squared plus 18z plus 30. Yes? And then you divide it by what? z squared plus 3. So let us do it quickly. So this becomes, let me change my color not to mix things. So it becomes z squared. And then it becomes minus z to the 4 minus 3z squared, yes? And if I add them, it becomes how much? It becomes 6z to the 3 plus 10z squared plus 18z plus 30. And then the next one would be plus 6z minus 6z cubed minus 18z. And then, yes, that's it. And then I do this once more. So this one and that one, this one and that one are gone. So I get 10z squared plus 30 and I am done. Because I multiply, it becomes 10. And then this remainder becomes 0. Yes? So it means that now I can immediately see that uh, the polynomial, let me call it pz, is equal to z squared plus 3 multiplied by z squared plus 6z plus 10. Yes? And now everything is ready now. This is a very simple task to do. If you want to put this equal to zero, that's a quadratic equation. You can solve it yourself and find the roots. So I would call it a very nice problem. And you see that this is designed by Swedish books. Yes, that's Mathematics 5000. So yeah, this really deserves to be a, a level three problem. Any questions? So you can continue this part yourself. So now, let us now go to the new lesson today. Today's lesson is actually, yes, simpler so make it visible for you here so we want to talk so far we know that complex numbers are just numbers with the real part and imaginary part we want to find a way to visualize them because usually our brain are developed or i don't know by evolution or something we understand figures and pictures a little bit better than abstract notions yes so for the, for the time being we were working on complex numbers very abstractly but it is better to try to find a way to visualize, if possible, the complex numbers, yes? So that, is, that brings us to the notion of the complex plane. And that is actually something very simple. Complex plane means a, horizon, a coordinate system, as before. But this horizontal axis is not called the x-axis, it is called the real axis. And the vertical axis is called the imaginary axis in the, in, instead of the y-axis. And then, when I say a complex number, a complex number is any number of this form, x plus y, i. Yes? So I choose x on the real part, I choose y on the imaginary part, and then find the point. So that point, I would say this point represents this complex number in the complex plane. So it's just more or less the same thing as coordinate system. Yes, but the x value is the real part, the y value is the imaginary part. Is that clear? Another way of representing a, a, vec a complex number is using the notion of a vector. Okay, and that's also important for the next lesson. If I connect the origin to this point and put the tip of the arrow here, this vector is also a good representation of this uh, complex numbers. So for complex numbers, we can visualize them in two different ways. We can visualize them as, as points in the complex plane, exactly like coordinate system, or we can visualize them by arrows, yes, or vectors. But the convention is that the origin of that vector always by convention is the origin of the coordinate system, and the tip of the arrow, the final point of the vector, is the point that you find it in the complex system. So is that clear? That's very simple, actually. Now, represent uh, each complex number as a point in the complex plane, okay? So I need to find a way somewhere here. Uh, yeah, we can do it something like that. I can go here, um, add a page. Yes. 
and then I can copy this one with me. Yeah, let me paste it here. Okay, so this is a very, very simple exercise, actually. Represent each of the following complex numbers as a point in the complex plane. Yeah, let us just do it quickly. Yes, the first one, uh, I draw just a coordinate system, but you need to remember the words, yes? So you, you shouldn't write the x coordinate, the x-axis. You need to write RE, the real part, and the imaginary part. And then the real part is 2, so it's 1, 2. And then the imaginary part is 3. So where the point lies is here and here. Yes, 1, 2, 3. And then this point would be this. So this point is Z1. Yes? And I don't know. For example, you go here. The real part is minus 3. The real part is minus 3. Uh, this, the other part is... Let me just draw it more bigger, okay? And then have this one so the real part is minus 3 and the imaginary part is minus 2 so then I will connect these two and this would be Z2 is that understandable yeah I don't think so where is Z3 Z Z3 is just 4 so it is 1 2 3 4 this is Z3 yes and where is Z4 Z4 is minus 2i the real part is 0 the imaginary part is minus 2 so here this point is just Z4. Yes? So it's very simple. Uh, now, can you tell me what is this one? What is your idea? What is your opinion about this? How is the relative position of a complex number with respect to its conjugate? Yes? With respect? to the real axis, to the horizontal one, yes? Yeah, exactly. So everyone, you know that, what was the, these are good to understand from geometrical point of view as well. So if I give you Z, you know that Z is X plus YI. If I ask you what is Z bar, you know that Z bar is nothing except X minus YI. So what is happening, it means that I am keeping the real part the same, but I am changing the sign of the imaginary part. So it means that the point will be flipped with respect to the horizontal axis, which is the y-axis, yes? Well, sorry, which is the x-axis in the previous setup. So it's good to know that, yes? So if I have this point, so, so for example, if this is my z, if I just m do the mirror imaging here, one, two, three, four, for example, in this picture, this would be z bar, yes? Is that understandable? So it is good to know about these things. Okay, this is a little bit more tricky. Can you tell me what's the difference? So what happens? If I have a, if I have a complex number z somewhere in the complex plane, we don't know where, but I take that number, I just multiply it by i, it becomes another complex number, when I go and show it, what is the relation between, what is happening to the previous point? What happens to a complex number in the complex plane if I multiply it by i? Yes? No. No. So is the question clear? I have, an, I have a point in the complex plane, I don't know where it is. I take that number, multiply it by i, it becomes a new complex number. How this new complex number is related to the previous number? What is happening to the previous point that I get from geometrical point of view? Yes, Carl? Um, well, the real value becomes the imaginary. Okay, but just give me more tangible thing. Yes, I understand that. But what happens geometrically? No. Okay, but I want more tangible. So what is the, what, let me tell you, what geometric operation is done on Z when I multiply it by I? So for example, let me just give you an example. Let us take Z equals to, I don't know, uh, 2 plus 3I, yes? So if I draw this picture here for you, where is Z 2 plus 3I? So let us consider that this is, for example, 2. Uh, two and then I have one two three for example here and this is my z two and three yes 
2 3 i now i multiply this by i it becomes my it becomes a minus 3 plus 2 i do you agree and then let us do and find minus 3 minus 3 is somewhere here and 2 is somewhere here for example i get this point so you see how this point is connected to that point my picture is very poor i will make it better but i want i don't want to give you some hints by drawing it a better picture so what do you think is happening to points if i multiply them by i Yeah, this is a very poor picture, of course, <laughs> but yes. Uh, somehow, what you were correct, but what do you mean by flipped? Uh, that's not flipped. Rotate. rotate. Yes. So we rotate ninety degrees about the origin. Yes, that's that's the correct. Yes, that's the completely correct way. So why is that? So let me get rid of all these things now here. Let me make a little bit of more space. No. So here. So, yes, we let me just try to show motivate you somehow. So let me write z equals to x plus yi. This is my complex number. And let me multiply it by i. What happens? It becomes i x minus y. When I write it correctly, it becomes minus y plus i x yes so what is happening it means that i started with x and y so for example let us consider this is x and this is y for example and then if i connect these two points this becomes this uh, point z and let me now understand what is this one minus y it means that if this is y definitely this would be minus y yes so here it would be minus y but positive x so positive x is uh, where it's again here yes uh, no i am making mistakes sorry you are not correcting me okay so um, this one i was mistaking so here minus y should be the same length but on the real axis so minus y is here yes so that is minus y here and where is x on the imaginary axis so imaginary axis here this should be x and if i find these two points this would be this new point yes so this is i z and now if i draw this point to here and this one to here we want to convince ourselves that we are actually rotating this point about the origin 90 degrees. Is that understandable? So this is what is happening uh, when I do this. Why do you think this is in general true if you want to give a rigorous argument? Why this is happening? It is clear that x plus yi goes to minus y plus ix. Okay? So, first of all... If you want to say something is ro the rotation, you need to convince yourself this length and that length are the same. Yes? If these two lengths are not the same, that's not a rotation. Rotation, it means that you put the needle of the compass some point and then you fix the radius and just draw. Yes? So it means that you need to convince yourself this length is equal to this length. If you convince yourself from that, then you have to measure this angle. Yes? Then, if this angle is 90, and if these two lengths are the same, you say that the effect is rotation about the origin 90 degrees. But it is extremely simple to motivate yourself that these two lengths are the same. Why? By Pythagoras theorem, yes? So this, from here to here, is y. From here to here is x. So this length is nothing except x squared plus y squared, yes? And the same is true here, yes, because from here to here is what is minus y. But if you write it, it becomes minus y to power 2 from length point of view. And the length here is x. So you see that you get the same value. So it is clear that these two are the same. But why the angle is 90? Why the angle is not 120? Why? There are different ways, for example, you convince yourself from geometrical point of view or from a slope, k 
K value point of view, yes? You calculate the K value of this line, you calculate the K value of this line, and you multiply them, it becomes negative one. This is one way to do that. But even simpler, do you agree that this triangle and that triangle are congruent? Yes? It's easy to prove them. It's very simple. And it means that this angle and that angle are equal. If these two angles are equal, can you tell me what is the sum of these two angles? Yeah, this, uh, this uh, no, sorry. This angle is equal to this angle, but this angle and that angle are complement. So let me write it. it is, it's, uh, so let me write it alpha, beta, and gamma. So if I ask you what is alpha plus beta, what is your answer in this triangle? It's 90 degrees. If I ask you, do you agree that alpha and gamma are the same? Yes. So instead of alpha, I put gamma. So what happens? It becomes gamma plus beta is 90 degrees. So gamma is this part. Beta is this part. The sum of these two are 90 degree, is 90 degrees. So what is left over is also 90 degrees. Yes? So that's up to you how to. But this is a good exercise. You see, it's always good to imagine what happens geometrically when you do something to complex numbers. So this is a very important uh, fact to remember. When you multiply a complex number by i, it means that you are rotating that complex number about the origin by angle 90 degree counterclockwise, not clockwise. Yes? Okay, so let us do this exercise. This exercise is the core of this lesson. Okay? So in each case, specify all the points R all, all the points Z on the complex plane that the given equality or inequality represents. Okay? So, for example, imaginary part is, of Z is equal to 1. It means that go to the complex plane, look for all complex numbers so that their imaginary part is equal to 1 and specify them. This is the meaning of this exercise and it is the, the important part of today's lesson. Okay, so what is this? What do you think? What is the shape representing this? Yes? A horizontal line. A horizontal line? More, more? Yes, it's a horizontal line, but passing through? through one. one on the, on the re imaginary axis. Yes, so it means that if I want to specify this, uh, I can do it geometrically or I can do it algebraically. If I want to do it geometrically, it's very good to have both, I, both of these ways in your head. So if I want to do number one, what I do, uh, I will draw a co the complex plane. And I would say that I am interested in all those complex numbers so that the imaginary part is equal to one. Okay, so is this point acceptable? Yes, because the imaginary point part is one. Is this point acceptable? Yes. All these points are acceptable, agree? So this means that all these lines, the points on this line is acceptable. The imaginary part of all these points on this horizontal line is equal to one. Do you agree? Yes? If you want to solve it algebraically, so you need to draw the picture here. So this is imaginary of z equals to one. If you want to do it algebraically, you would say that, let us call z to be x plus yi. And then imaginary of z equals to 1, it means that y is equal to 1. But you already know how to do with y equal to 1. You draw the picture, yes? So this is the algebraic way of solution. Okay, so let us do number 2. What do you think would be this? What part of the complex plane is being represented by this double inequality? I am interested in all those complex numbers Z so that the real part lies somewhere between 1 and 3. Exclusive 1, inclusive 3. Is that understandable? So what, is the, what, is, what type of figure do you expect? What's that? The real part should be somewhere between 1 and 3. So that's a strip. Yes? Is that understandable? So let us just do this. Number 2. Uh, number 2. What is this one? I would say that let us concentrate on this uh, complex plane. So you see that I want to have my real part 
somewhere between 1 and 3. So here is 1, here is 3, yes? I want to have my real part somewhere between them. So it is clear that I have to be somewhere here, yes? Yes? But I am not allowed to touch this line because 1 is excluded, it's not equal. But I am allowed to be on this line. Okay, if you want to show it in practice by drawing, you need to respect these rules. So what you do, you draw a, a dotted line here. So it means that you are respecting that this is not part of the uh, part. And then you draw a solid line here. It means that I am considering this as one part. And then, of course, you need to, I don't know, it is hard to do it on iPad, but you need to color every area among them, yes? Something like this. You understand what I mean. But I'm not allowed to touch the other parts. But you understand what I mean. So that is a strip. Yes? It, it is not, that dotted line is not included. Uh, the green part is included. And the solid line on the right is also included. So this inequality represents this part of the complex plane. Is that understandable? More interesting problems. So number three, it's hard to imagine it geometrically. So this is a mixture of problems. For number one and two, you really don't need to do it algebraically. But if I ask you, can you tell me what is that equation representing? Uh, 2z plus 3z bar is equal to 5. It's not easy, at least I don't find a way, to imagine immediately from geometrical point of view what that equation is representing in the complex number. So I would say that for this case, there is only one possible way to do it, and that is algebraic way. Yes? Okay, so... How do you think that we can solve the problem? Can you help me to do that? How should I do that? Yes? Z, write, uh, Let us write x plus yi. When it comes to complex planes, x and y are more natural. Yes? Yes, you are right. So what I do, I would write number three. I would say that let, I don't know the value for z. Let, I would say let z be equals to x plus yi. And then I plug this into this equation. So this becomes two. Uh, z x plus y i plus 3 z bar which is x minus y i is equal to 5 yes and then what happens 2 x and 3 x becomes 5 x and 2 y i minus 3 y i becomes minus y i is equal to 5 okay can you continue from here what should I do now yes yes Yes, x is what? X is, one. x is 1, y is 0. So now can you tell me what does this equation represent? A point. Whose x coordinate is 1 and y coordinate is 0. So if I ask you to draw the graph of something to represent this, you just draw a coordinate system like that, and then the point 1 and 0. This is your point. This is the answer. That's it. So that is just one single point. Yes? Okay, I want to stop because everyone is sleeping probably these days. But anyway, let us just do number four, okay? So I will stop. Uh, okay, so for this, uh, uh, for this part four, algebraic way seems the only way. It's probably not possible to imagine it from geometrical point of view. So for part four, I would say let z be equals to x plus yi. I. I need to find everything that I need in this inequality. So I don't have any problems with z. What is imaginary z? Let me just write it again. Imaginary z is not yi, is just y by definition. It's the coefficient of i. Okay, and then what is z bar? z bar is x minus yi. And I know I need z minus 2 as well. So z minus 2 is x minus 2 plus y i and this means that what is the real part of z minus 2 it's x minus 2 i think everything is now ready yes so i plug everything that i have into equation number four in an into inequality number four so this becomes three what is z bar z bar is x minus y i plus what is the imaginary of z is just y is plus three times z is greater than or equal 1 minus 2 times the real part of that, which is x minus 2. Do you agree? This is what I get. 
Of course, you are right. If i is left at the end, this means that I am comparing two complex numbers. By the way, this is also good to know. Uh, I cannot say which complex... For example, I cannot say 1 plus 2i, and then I have another one, 3 plus 5i, which one is greater than the other one. Yes? I'll come to your question, okay? Uh, of course, I can define an order. It's also, by the way, it's very important. What is order? Order is means, for example, I would say that the set of real numbers is an ordered set. Because if you give me any three, any numbers from them, any, any pair from them, I can, I can write one of them on the left, the other one on the right. For example, the smaller one on the left, the bigger one on the right. Can we define an order for complex numbers? Have you thought about that? Yes? I mean, we could say which one is furthest away from the origin. origin. This is one way to do that, but are all of them uh, comparable? Because what's the problem in, in, in the real... What, what is the downside of this way of ordering? There are four points which are... There are infinitely many points that they have... Equi that this, for example, what you are saying is that I compare this point with that point. You are saying that the distance from this point to this is a smaller from this one to this one. So I can define this one is greater than this one. Something like that. But this is not good because what happens for this situation? If I have a circle centered at the origin, compare these two numbers. They are not the same. Which one is bigger? According to your definition, none of them is bigger, yes? Because the distance from the origin is the same. So if you want to define the order in this way, you will be in trouble, yes? But there is a way that you can define an order, and that is called lexo lexographic order it means dictionary order okay it's like dictionary so do you know what to do in dictionary for example you have book i don't know you have bat which one comes first in the dictionary for example let me write uh, zebra which one comes first in the dictionary definitely this one are coming before zebra but for book and bat because they start with the same first letter, we go to the next one and compare them. And we realize bat is coming before this. So if I want to order these words according to dictionary order, can I order them from left to right? Yes. So that's an order. I am not talking which one is bigger than one. This is nonsense in the words, yes, which one is bigger. But the point is that if you give me a bunch of words, I can order them for you. Yes, according to dictionary one. So I can do the same thing with complex numbers, okay? So for example, I would say that if you want to compare two complex numbers, first of all, compare the first parts. If A is greater than C, say that this comes later than this one. If A is equal to C, then compare the imaginary parts. So you see, you can order them. For example, if I give you a bunch of num complex numbers, 1 plus 2i, I don't know, minus 3 plus 5i, and I don't, uh, let me write the other one, uh, 7 plus 2, let, let me write 7 minus 3i. Uh, can you order them now using lexicographic order? Which one is the, which one is, is smallest is not making sense, I want to order them. If, if you want to follow this order, which one comes first? in this list. Which one comes first, yes? Minus three plus yes, minus 3 plus i, because this one I compare it with everyone. And let me write another one here, minus 3 plus uh, 7i. So yes, you write minus 3 plus 5i first in your list. Yes? But what is coming next? Yes? Minus 3 plus 7i, yes? So let me write it here. Minus 3 plus 7i. What is coming next? 1 plus 2i. Two. Two What's coming next? 7 minus 3i. So you see, at least I can order them. And if you follow my rule, you also come up with the same list in the same order. So it means that I can order it. But what is the problem? Why we do not define this? You need to know a little bit more mathematics. The problem is that if you want to keep the order like this, and arithmetic simultaneously, you come to contradiction. So you need to decide which one to leave. 
You know, you know, you need to decide to have order, but lose arithmetic, or you need to keep arithmetic. Then of course you lose lose order. Okay, and of course we prefer to keep arithmetic the same. So that's the, I want you to just to know it's possible to define an order in complex numbers in this way, but then you lose the arithmetic. That's the problem that we prefer to lose the order. Yes, you want to work arithmetically. Okay, so that's actually a very important point. I wanted to mention it here. Now let me clean it. Uh, so here, let me continue quickly so that we can finalize this problem now. So this becomes 3x minus 3yi plus 3y plus 3x plus 3yi and greater than or equal 1 minus 2x plus 4. Yes, let me simplify. You see, I am not in trouble because this one and that one are gone. And that's the only i part. So this becomes 6x plus 3y is greater than or equal to 5 minus 2x. And I think you said exactly the correct one. So it becomes 8x. So if you don't mind, yeah, it doesn't matter. 8x plus 3y minus 5 greater than or equal to 0. So this is algebra for the time being. But I want you to specify the points on the plane. How should I do that? If it was equality, you were not in trouble. If I ask you this one equals to zero represents what? You say it represents a straight line. Yes? But the inequality does not represent a straight line. It's, it represents one side of that straight line. So how should you know which side? So let us, for example, draw a graph for this one. If I want to draw the graph for this, what is your... Yeah, we need to have two points. Yes, for example, let us consider x and y here. I don't know which one we can do. For example, do you have a better number here? Yes, we can do that. But what's the benefit? Is it's more beneficial? So let me just do what you said. So it, I will take it here. It becomes minus 8 over 3x and then plus 5 over 3. Okay, but of course, I have the same trouble again. Let us, let us use this way, as you said. Okay, it doesn't matter. 5 over 3, yes, momentarily consider this equality. If I put x equal to 0, it is clear that I get 5 over 3. And I don't know, if I put y equal to 0, what I get? I get 8, 5 over 8. Do you agree? Uh, y, x becomes 5 over 8. And then if I go here and draw these points on the complex plane, so, for example, f uh, 0 and 5 over 3, 5 over 3 is a little bit bigger than 1. Okay, let me exaggerate a little bit. So this is 5 over 3. And 5 over 8 is a little bit smaller. Yes? And then I connect these two points together. This becomes my line, of course. But this is not, this is not the answer to this problem. What is the answer to this problem now? I need to know which side of this line is acceptable. Okay? This is this line. But I need to know which one is this, represent this inequality. So you need to choose either this side or that side. But which one do you think is here? Yes? How do you know that? It has a greater y value. Yeah, it's hard for me to immediately realize. Might be you're right. I myself prefer to choose one point from one side and put the coordinates in the inequality. If it turns out to be true, it means that I choose on that side. If it is not true, I will choose the opposite side. Yes, it, it is not actually confusing at all. So I will take this 0 and 0 and put 0 and 0 here. It turns out that 0 is greater than or equal to 5 over 3. Is it true or false? So it is false, yes? So it means that this side is not acceptable. I have to go to the other side. Is the line itself acceptable in this case? Yes, yes because we have equality. Otherwise, you need to put it in the dashed form or dotted form. So what I do is this one. So I would say that, yes, everything here is actually acceptable. Yes, something like this. And the line is acceptable. So that would be this part of the coordinate system. Is that understandable? So probably that was the hardest one in these examples. And it was not easy to understand. I, I, don't, I don't actually know any way to understand it geometrically. But algebraically, we were able to find it immediately. Yes? Is that clear for everyone? Okay. So, yeah, I think it's better to stop here and continue the next part of the lesson later. Thank you very much.